Amen. So um, the name of the service this morning is called What Now? What Now? And so we are uh, children of God. And um, has anybody ever found yourself as believers asking the, the question, uh, what now? Has anybody ever had that? Yeah. Is, is everybody catching what the Lord is saying? Uh, you know, um, the moment you give your life to Christ, um, the moment you give your life to Christ, you uh, uh, wonder what you can do, what you should do. Um, and uh, you ever found yourself just asking that question, what now? You accepted the Lord, that's great, right? You accepted the Lord, you uh, accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you believe in him, you trust in him. Uh, but what now? You uh, believe that he died for your sins. But what now? You Anybody ever had that great feeling where you're crying out to the Lord and you say, man, thank you, Jesus, I accept you. I believe you now. I believe that you died for all my sins. I believe that you were risen on the third day so that I would know that you exist. But... What now? What do we do now? What, what happens after that? And God left a map. He left a map for all of us. But you first must understand what that map is about. In order to achieve the goal of being the most effective Christian, and how many in here want to be effective Christians? Yeah. You don't just want to be in here saying, what now for the rest of your lives? You want to know what God wants you to do, and you want to be the most effective Christians you can be. That's what we want to do. We don't want to sit back and, and stay in idle mode. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy looking at all y'all. But I want people to come in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I want people to come in brokenhearted and lost and having all kinds of issues. Why? So that we can show them the promise keeper. So that we can show them the way maker. So that we can show them the light and the darkness. So that we can show them that there is a Jesus Christ who died so that you may have light today. Amen. So you ask yourself, what now? How do I become an effective Christian? In order to achieve that goal, to be the most effective Christian you can be, you have to first understand the rules. You have to first know how uh, uh, to obtain the Spirit of God and understand how the Spirit of God works. You have to know uh, how to answer that question. You have to have all the answers. And without the answers, you just left for the rest of your life going, oh, well, it's great. I think I believe. I don't know if God exists. I think I accepted him. No, what now? You want to ask that question, and you want to get the answer to that question. In order to be effective in anything you seek or obtain, it's always best to understand how the rules apply to that, that situation or how it functions. A novice person knows. A novice person knows that uh, you don't have to know anything about vehicles. How many people know everything about vehicles? How many people know nothing about vehicles? That should be everybody in there. Just raise your hands and say, I'm one of those. A novice person who does not understand the basics about vehicles, they still understand that if it does not have oil, it will not run effectively. Novice people, amen? amen. You may not be a professional mechanic or anything to do with mechanics, but you do understand that if it does not have uh, water at least or antifreeze, it will not run effectively, right? Amen? amen. Novice folks, all of us agree on that. And so, you may not understand all the details to how a vehicle runs and understand all the intricate parts and, and how one complements the other, but you understand the basic necessary rules for it to function effectively. You don't know what the oil does, but you go get a change every few 3,000 miles, 5,000 miles, 10,000 10, miles too much, but 5,000 miles, right? Amen? Amen. When it's black, right? You don't need to know. You don't even check the miles. Some of you don't even know. Uh, I don't know how many miles is looking. Black, change. That's all you know. That's fine, but it works. And so, in this world, you know, when even when you when you want a job, you know, when you want a job, uh, you can you don't sit back and say, "Job, please come to me in the name of Jesus." No, that's not what you do. What you do, you put in a what application, right? That's novice. Novice. You don't have to be a professional at job seeking, but you know that you have to put in something to get the job. 
And so even though you're interested, even though you want a specific type of job, you don't just sit there and hope the job comes to you. You put in the application for the job because that's a requirement. If they are interested in you, depending on their rules and requirements, they may call you in for what? An interview. Everybody, this is this easy stuff, right? Everybody gets this. Anybody confused? Yeah? Anybody? We're all good? And if they like you even more, they may call you in for a second what? Interview. That's normal stuff. If they call you and say, I, I need you to come in for an interview, you don't say, why? Right? You say, okay, you're happy, because you know that's part of the process. And so, if they want to hire you, they give you certain directives on what happens next, right? If, they, if you go through that first and that second interview, they tell you things like, here's the rate of pay, right? Then you don't say, well, I want this pay. They say, here is the rate of pay. They say, here's your start date. They tell you what to wear. They say, this is your dress code. You say, no, I want to wear this. It don't work like that, right? You don't say, I'm going to wear this. I know you hired me, and I want to be paid this. No, that's not how it works. You, they tell you, this is the rate of pay. This is, what your, uh, this is your start date. This is the dress code you must be in. Here are the dates for your training. I don't need training. No, you don't say that, right? You just trust. You say, OK, I I'm going for training because you're having your hired. Here are your work hours. No, I want to work. No, you don't, don't work that way. Here are the hours we have hired you for. Here are the policies and procedures. Here are your days off. They tell you everything, right? Yeah. You say, I got to have Monday through Friday off. I'm only no, no, they hired you. And so they tell you the chain of command. You don't say, well, I don't want that person to be my boss. I want that person over there in the corner. No, you don't have those uh, luxuries. And the list goes on and on because what's ha happened is they hired you. You didn't hire them. You become part of their organization. In order to be successful in their organization, you must learn their system. And what you must do after you're hired. You must learn all of that. You want their job, you follow their rules. Isn't that how it works, family? If you want their job, you follow their rules. Uh, go to any job and ask, you know, uh, and do the same thing, you'll get the same answer. If you, if you want that job, you have to do the same thing. They'll say, oh, it's great that you want the job. I know you were working here, but you still have to put in a application. After you put in the application, you still go for a interview. No matter, 20 times. You can do it 20 times. Guess what? Same thing will happen. It's 20 jobs. I'm not putting in an application this time. I'm just waiting for them. No, that's not how it works. It is not based on you, it's based on them. And so, you go to any job and the same question has to be answered after you are hired. And that question is, what now? We recently, uh, like yesterday, purchased <laughs> purchased a thermostat for the air conditioning here. That's why it feels so good in here. Doesn't it feel good in here? Hey man. Um, when we opened the box up, we said this, the, the, that, that famous question. We looked at it, we see all the stuff to it, and it looked great and all that. It looked beautiful. It was, like, it was in the box, and you sitting there. It was pretty, but we asked the, that same question. We said, what now? What, what do we do now? How do we get this to, you know, uh, up there properly? You know, even, you know, the blessed men of God that we have in this church, Mel, thank you, uh, even the blessed men, of this God, uh, blessed men of God knew the basics of putting it up, but there were still questions. We still said, well, what now? Well, what do we do now? What, where do we go now? And the first thing we did when we opened the box is look for what? The instructions. Isn't that what you did? Look, this is simple class, right? Everybody passing. Everybody getting 100 today. We're good. That's the first thing we do, right? You don't look at the instructions, ball them up and throw them away. You pull the instructions out and you read them because this is not your product. You didn't create the product. And so after, after we follow the instructions and answer the question as to what now, go figure the product performed exactly like it promised. And that's just in the world. The things of the world work like that. And so imagine if we get it right in the Lord. Can you imagine if we get it right in the Lord? Uh, he's not asking us to be perfect. Some of us think we have to be. He's not asking us to be perfect. He's already got that handled. 
he's not asking us to know everything, guess what? He does. He already got that figured out. He's not saying, Larry, I need you to know everything. He's just saying he wants us to do the work. He's just asking that we follow his basic instructions before we leave this earth and get others to do the same. Isn't that simple? He wants us to get uh, to, to, uh, to understand, to, to get the instruction, to understand them, and just to allow other people to know about the instruction that he has. That's simple. We don't have to get all confused on it. He just wants us to do basic stuff. We can sum up all his instructions to what he says to his disciples in Matthew 28. And that's what we're going to discuss this morning. From Matthew 28, starting at verse 18, um, and going through, uh, through verse 20. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. First of all, I want you to write down what a disciple is. A disciple is one who follows the teachings of another. You can be a disciple of Christ, and you can also be a disciple of Satan. It's not just the people in the Bible. A disciple is one who follows the teachings of another. And so if we all uh, in here believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we follow his teachings, we are disciples of Jesus. Right? It's not just those 12 men or those 11 men back in the day who we heard of in the Bible. If you follow the teachings of Jesus, which we do, we are disciples for Christ. And so those uh, who follow Jesus in here say amen. 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 Those who are disciples of Christ look at your neighbor and say, that's me. That's, that's me. me. So it's, not, it's not hard. And so we want you to understand that before we go into this. Because as we go into this, you start to understand the Lord is talking about us. So let's break this all down so we can have our questions answered. Why? Uh, what now? Matthew 28, 18 says this. All authority in, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's saying all authority. I need you to know the definition of that means the right to use power. He already had all the power. He already was all knowing. He was God. He was God. He was God. So I need you to understand he wasn't given power. He was given the authority to use the power that he already had. And so Jesus, through his death, killed every sin that was in me. Jesus, through his death, killed every sin that was in you who believe. Jesus, through his death, took away everything we have done wrong from the beginning of time to now. He has taken away just by our faith in him. Can you give him a round of applause just for that alone? And so he's taken away our sins through, look, 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 everybody, look up here. You will sin again. But he took it away on the cross. You will do wrong again. But it, nailed, it was nailed to the cross with him. When he died, he took away everything you can do wrong. And all you, uh, all you had to do was believe that he did that. Believe that he was God. Believe that he was the, 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 the sacrifice for our sins. And believe that he is our Lord. And that's it. That's the first part, just believing. And so through Jesus, he killed every sin. Through the, his resurrection, he gave us hope. And so if he just died, that's one thing. But because he was resurrected from the dead, what does that give us hope in? In eternal life, you learn to understand that his death was for our sin. That was real stuff. And his resurrection shows us that we will be resurrected by the Father. Those who believe in him will have eternal life. Amen? Amen. And so that's, uh, that's basic stuff that we want to understand. In that new life, he, is, he was given the right to use his power that he has on heaven, uh, in heaven and on earth. So the right he has. So remember, he came down in the flesh. He came down having all power. He was with God. He was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Because of him, all things were made. So Jesus had the power. He had the authority. But what, what the God the Father gave, when he came down to earth, he submitted all his power and all his authority for you. 
to follow and depend on the Father only. Why? For you. If he had came down here and healed people under his power and under his authority, you couldn't do the same thing. So he came down and every person he healed was because of the Father. Every person he lifted up was because of the Father. Every person he talked to was because of the Father. And so he did the will of the Father. What did he say over and over? I came to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I not lose any of you. So you are not here by circumstance. You are here because God wanted you to be here. Can you give God a round of applause in the house of the Lord? This is not circumstance. He has, look, you may have had a trial in your life. You may have had a challenge with something. But he brought you here because he needed you to be here. Because he wanted you to see his will being done. Amen. So, in that new life, Jesus was given the power, uh, to, the right to use his power in heaven and in, on earth. Now, let's read this again. It says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, meaning he can now use his power. Therefore, go. Wow. Therefore, you see that word therefore? The reason that word therefore is in there is because it's continuation on what he just said. He's saying, I have all the power, all authority. I can use all the Lord, Father, God has released me to use all my power and all my authority. Therefore, this is what I need you to do. That therefore takes away fear. It takes away doubt. It takes away disbelief. It takes away all those things, those hindrances that you had. Because therefore, when you take a step in the name of Jesus, you have to know that his power is there. Yes. Therefore. So he said, therefore, go. Oh, lift your neighbor and say, go. 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 So his disciples were given instructions based on the principle of, the, uh, of Jesus using his power. And we are instructed to go because he has right to use all of his power with us. So when he tells us to do something, when he tells us to take a step, when he tells us to trust in him, when he tells us to have faith, there's nothing to fear. Look at your neighbor and say, there's nothing to fear. Look, I know you may be looking at an ailment or a trial or a situation in your life, but uh, trust me, there is nothing to fear. I know you may have an ailment that you're dealing with or, or something that you're, that's on your mind or is heavy on your heart, but there is nothing to fear. It's not because Pastor Larry says it. It's because Jesus says it. You have nothing to fear. Even if the Lord tells you, you know, or, or the world tells you, you're terminal. The Lord says when you live and when you die. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. And so we have to understand that no matter the circumstances, there's nothing to fear. The only thing that we should fear, the only person that we should fear is what it says in Proverbs 3. God. And he's on our team. You know, it, it, it's one thing to fear that if you're on baseball, you fear that other batter who hits home runs all the time. But you got that batter on your team. You fear that football player who runs and nobody can tackle, but he's on your team. You fear that coach who's winning title. He's on your team. There's nothing for you to fear but God himself. And God says, I am with you. Why do we fear the enemy? God is with us. Why do we fear what Satan says? God says other things. And so he's on our team and, it, and uh, whatever he leads us to do, we do it with fear in submission to our faith. We trust God more than we fear the results. Every Goliath fighting in our lives is fighting our Lord. Every Goliath, everybody know the story about Goliath, that, uh, uh, that enormous giant fighting David? What I'm telling you is every enormous thing that is in your life is fighting God. That's it. Look, the victory is his. It's not yours. It's his. 
I don't know what the enemy wants to do to bless Kingdom Ministries in this place, but you're not fighting Pastor Larry. You're not fighting Shannon Gray. You're not fighting the members of this church. you fighting the Lord God Almighty because he was the one who brought us here. Do you understand who they're fighting? The ministry didn't survive for, for nine years on our strength. It survived for nine years on the strength of God. The one who upholds this world. The one who tells the waters where they can go to. The one who tells the, the, the storms how when they can start and when they can end. The one who protects your house. The one who protects your lives. Who protects your children. Who protects your job. Look, that's our God. The building wasn't acquired on our strength. It was acquired on the strength of God. And anybody who thinks different is wrong. Every mortgage payment that is made is not made in the name of blessed kingdom ministries. It's made in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Verse 19. He says, go. Look at your neighbor say, go. Go. And make disciples of all nations. I heard y'all. I see some of y'all say, go. I saw that. I saw that. Y'all was enjoying it, right? <laughs> I see y'all. Uh, so... It says, go and make disciples. But you know what? Sometimes you got to be that aggressive. Go and make disciples. Now, the Greek word translated to go uh, is actually what they call a present uh, participle. Uh, it's more like uh, moving, like go in. And so it's not saying go. It's saying go in. So it's something you're going to be doing. Not, I need you to go. It's saying, why you're going? So, under, so understand this. He's saying, go in, go, while you're going to make disciples, as a child of God, in the name of Jesus, you are going to do the will of God. While you are doing the will of God, this is what I need you to do. He said, while you're going, make disciples. What is disciple? Well, guess who we are? Disciples. He wants you to make more of you. More people with, with issues, with challenges, with trials, with tribulations, all the things on their mind, uh, ailments. He wants more of you. Not more of me, more of you. What did Jesus' disciples do with him? Think about it. What did they do with him? They spent all their time with him. They ate with him. They studied with him. They, you know, they 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 shared uh, healings with them. They, uh, you know, with him. They he, they watched him do his work. They watched him talk to the sick. They watched him talk to the poor. They watched him talk to uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes and the Zealots. They watched him talk to all those folks. They watched him walk on water. They watched him do all those miracles. They slept with him at night. They, they broke bread. They, they hung out. To, look, that's what we're supposed to be doing, family. When, when you come to the church, you say, man, we, we hang out a lot. We have fun. We eat together. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to know every nook and cranny about each other. We're supposed to know what we're supposed to be doing. So he says, go and make disciples. He wants you to make more people just like you. They didn't just convert people. And this is where the church misses it sometimes. They didn't just make people converts and never hear from them again. They did all that stuff, that intricate stuff. They made time with them. They shared with them. And they also individually taught these people the word of God. It's not just one man teaching everybody. It's everybody teaching everybody from what they've learned from that man, from that man, from that man, from this man, from this person, from that person, from Bible study, from this. They took all that information and they shared it. And they took that person and locked on with them. And as they made that person a disciple, they became responsible for that person. Hey, why are you not at church today? Hey, where are you going? What's going? Look, that's what we're supposed to be doing, family. We're not supposed to just, 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 just depend on one or two people. It is all of us as a family. And so, us as disciples, as we are going out, we are to make others like ourselves and then link up with them and assist them through the process. So when they say, I got this problem going on with my, uh, with my, with my car, we supposed to be there helping them. When they say, I got this, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I can make it a Bible study. Well, you don't say, well, I'm sorry, hopefully you can make it next week. 
you go pick them up. Why? Because we link arms. I'm making them into what I am. If I'm a disciple and they're wanting to be a disciple and they're trying to follow Jesus, I got to help them to follow Jesus. Satan hates when you do stuff like that. They say, my car is broke. Say, great, I'll be able to pick you up where you at. I got this going on, great, I'll help you with it. I got a flat tire, great, I got a jack. Amen. Isn't that what we do? Do you understand that what you're doing is for the Lord God Almighty? And so we're supposed to go out and make people disciples. And so it says, uh, verse 19, it says, Therefore go, everybody look at your neighbor and say, go. go! Go! Make disciples of all nations. What does that mean? That means they come in all kinds. They're not just all black or all Hispanic or all white. There are all kinds. That's why you look around this room and you see all different types of people. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. He says, baptizing them. I want you to write that down. Baptizing them. And you know what a, a, a baptism is when they submerged in water. And they, uh, uh, but you got to understand what the, the, the meaning of it is. I always use the term, it's an outward showing of an inward change. Meaning, I just accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord. I am excited about that. I want to follow him. I don't understand it all, but somebody's locking arms with me. They're going to teach me and show me the word of God and help me in my circumstances. Now, the first thing I want to do is tell everybody that I know Jesus. Well, that's how you do it. You get baptized. It's a water baptism. And now, you know, and so what you'll find that we want, that we will be doing is we will have the availability to baptize people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We are preparing for the work of God in this ministry. Amen. Aren't you excited about that? Amen. 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 So it says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand there are three but one? God is Father, God is Son, God is Holy Spirit. But they're all one. They're three but one. There are three aspects. There are three different uh, versions of who God is. And so, it says, go and make disciples. And so, remember, as they are going, we they're making disciples. And Jesus says, baptize them. Means you know the, the 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 baptizing and the submerging in water, the outward change, the outward showing of an inward change. Um, now I need you to understand because we don't want confusion in here. Baptizing doesn't make you any more saved than being in a garage makes you a car. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that? Baptizing doesn't make you saved. You can get submerged in what? I need to get resubmerged. That don't make you saved. Stuff. You just get wet. Submerging doesn't make you saved. Because the change would have happened before the submerging. The submerging is just evidence of the change. So you get the submerging as you come out of the water. I hear people say, I came out of the water, I felt new. No, you felt cold because you were wet. <laughs> there is a difference. The, the new is before the submerging. The submerging in the water is evidence. All you're doing is saying, I have accepted Jesus. I want all of you to see that I have accepted Jesus. I am proclaiming Christ on this earth. Doesn't mean I'm not going to mess up again. Doesn't mean I'm gonna, not going to retract and do things wrong. But it means that I have given my life to Christ. I believe he exists. And I, I promise that as long as he leads me, I will take those steps. Amen. I don't understand it all. So it doesn't make you any more saved. It just alerts you. Alerts every one of your change of allegiance. What do we do in a, you know, if we like a certain football team? Allegiance. We wear their hats. We wear their shirts. We go to their games if we can afford them. We do all that stuff, right? What do we do? You know, people have different allegiances. And so as a Christian, when you believe in Christ, you want to show your allegiance to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. People need to know that you have, you have accepted Jesus. The baptism shows that you have accepted Jesus. In the world, we do things, we have allegiances, but in the spirit, we have an eternal allegiance. And that's in Jesus Christ. And so after... Uh, 
they baptize people in the Old Test. I mean, in the Old, um, in the New Testament, when they after they baptize people, you have to understand that that wasn't the end. That was actually the beginning. And so we've got to shift the way the church thinks nowadays. That when you baptize, oh, they're free. They know the Lord. They're done. No, that's when it begins. What does it say here? Therefore, everybody say, therefore go. Therefore go. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That's where it begins. It doesn't end there. It begins there. You say, ooh, another soul saved. No, another soul you got to teach. Another soul you got to call. Another soul you got to relate to. You got to talk to them through their challenges. They don't need the, just the pastor. The pastor doesn't need to talk to 100 people. The pastor needs 100 people to talk to 100 others. You get it? So... So after they were baptized, that was the beginning. The teachings begin on the salvation walk. After the salvation, after the, uh, you've given your life. Doesn't mean they won't make, make mistakes. It means that you are the one who will help them through your teachings, through your understanding, through your studying. Have you, has anybody ever said this before, like I said years ago? Man, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Well, you know what that exposed? That exposed the number of Bible studies I've been to. That exposed the number of services I went to. That exposed the, the, the lack of learning that I didn't, that I didn't, I wasn't prepared for when the person came. And so what I had to do is gear myself up. I had to start going to everything, focusing on everything. Why? Because I'm doing the work of the ministry. I'm taking steps for the Lord. Every step is ordered by God. So that means every Bible study I go to, Lord, you're teaching me. Thank you. Who are you going to bring that needs to understand that? It's never about me in the study. It's about him. It was never about me at the services. It was about him. And so I was excited every time I would sit there and write notes. And other people would just sit there. I'd sit there and write notes. Why, why are you writing notes? Because it's not about me. Okay, so let's sum this up. Because I want you to understand. It says, in teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Everybody say amen. Amen. Let's sum this up. Because here are the rules for us to understand. These are the rules. This is it. This is what you, you want to know. You don't have to know this whole Bible. You just need to know this part. If you know this part and we operate on this part as a ministry and everything is focused on this part, guess what? Multiplication happens. Not because of us, because of God. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, has been given authority. So you have nothing to worry about. Look at your neighbor and say, you got nothing to worry about. Do it like we do in the hood. Say, you good. You're good. <laughs> Look at the name and say, I got you. I got you. Look, no matter what I say, you're going to repeat it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we cool. No, I'm good. Uh, so, <laughs> so Jesus, through his death and burial and resurrection, has been given authority. The power, the right to use all the power that he has in all of our situation so we have nothing to worry about. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Because of that, he wants us to continue to tell others about his grace. Isn't that what we read? All authority in heaven is beginning. Therefore, because of that, I need to do this. Go make disciples. Wow. Then he says to baptize of what? To show an outward showing of an inward change. To show their allegiance to the Lord. And then he says, begin to teach them the word of God. He didn't say take them to the pastor after they get wet and after they know God. Take them to the pastor, let the pastor do the rest. No. He said, you teach them. You've been learning. You teach them. It's your duty. You, you have to prepare yourself. So when you come to, to the Bible study, when you come to the things that are of God, don't come for yourself. Come for who God is going to bring you. Come ready to multiply the word of God to tell pe other people about what you have learned about Jesus. So you ask the question, what now? 
Here are these things. No fear. Tell others. Baptize them and teach them. Let's say that. No fear. No fear. Tell others. Tell others. Baptize them. Baptize them. Teach them. Teach them. Everybody signed up for that class? See. <laughs> it's not good enough just to win people to Jesus. We have to teach them. You teach them about what you look. I don't know much. I don't know. I don't have the answer to this, but let me call somebody who can get you the answer. I do have the answer to this. It says, no way before me, we shall prosper. It says, greater is the one that is in you than greater. And not only does it teach them, but it helps you also. And so, I said, you know, you know, so we understand the what nows are no fear, tell others to baptize them and teach them. No fear, tell others, baptize them and teach them. Those are his basic instructions before leaving earth for us. And we said that earlier, his basic instructions before leaving earth. If you look at the acronym for that, that's spelled uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, that's fine. Yeah. And so for us as Christians, what now? That's it. That's what we do. Every ministry, everything we do should be about that. No extras. If we bring on a ministry, it needs to be about that. We want to take our children with us, not just to take them, but to be about that. To show them what that's about. To show them not to have fear. To show them how to tell others about Jesus. To show them what it means to be baptized. To show them how to teach others. Why? Because then when they are ready, they will do the same thing. Look at your neighbor and say, what now? What now? Everybody say it together. No fear. No fear. Tell others. Tell others. Baptize them. Baptize them. Teach them. Teach them. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, I need you to stand and give God glory and honor.